Well, good morning again. Good morning. Always wonderful to be with you in God's house. This morning we're looking at Ephesians 4, 25 through 5.2. It's just a little sidebar. I was thinking, um, I always send the, the team a copy of the music and the scripture that I've chosen for this morning, for the morning message. And Deanne says, I, I like all the music, but boy, that's a long passage. Boy, what is she talking about? 425 through 52. It's just a few lines. When we got here for uh, rehearsal last night, she go, I said, what did you mean by long? She said, when you put in 425 through 525. <laughs> so we're spared. It's just a snippet of what Paul says to the uh, Ephesians. So let's go ahead and take a look. I've entitled it Spare Room and Hopefully that will become uh, obvious why I've entitled the message Spare Room. Let's take a look at Ephesians. I'm going to turn this way. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And do not give evil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. That is, that it may be beneficial to those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness and rage and anger and brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgive you. Follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself us, up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. It is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So I'm reading all of this and trying to figure out what is the message that we need to hear from this morning. And it brings me back to our uh, younger married days. I'm thinking of the times when we were in a little apartment. One bedroom, one bath, one room. Then we graduated to two bedrooms, one bath, then two bedrooms, two baths, three bedrooms, two baths. Our house, when we moved into our house that we live in currently, it has a laundry room. Well, it's not real big, but I thought, finally, a place I can iron my shirts. We kept growing and we're looking for more space, more room. And what we were always seeking was a spare room, right? Something that you didn't have to have, but wasn't it nice to have just a little extra room? And I'm thinking, we're not different from anybody else. Everybody would like a little bit bigger house, little extra rooms, dining room, living room, family room, workout rooms, storage rooms. Oh my goodness. Remember the classic line from the Wizard of Oz? There's no place like home when she her heels together. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. And isn't there a difference between a house and a home? Yes. And the most important function that a house has for all of us is that it provides a space for our stuff. <laughs> now, I'm not a big fan of George Carlin. God rest his soul, but... Uh, he had this routine when, when he would say, uh, George Carlin would say that uh, that's all your house is, a place to keep your stuff. If you didn't have so much stuff, you wouldn't even need a house. <laughs> a house is just a pile of stuff with a cover over the top. <clears throat> well, I have to admit, there's a shred of truth in, in all of this. Amen. And how about the people who need a McMan McMansion? Three's three-car garages, uh, mega homes, so they can 
put all of their stuff in it. So um, um, there's a show on TV. I don't know if, if you watch it or whether you love it or, or, or don't like it at all.